Wouldn't it be pretty cool to be able to sync files with your desktop PC from anywhere in the world without using any third-party cloud services, worrying about firewalling, having any ports open on your router, or nobody being able to see the endpoint of your file syncing? In other words, an easy setup that respects your privacy in addition to being secure. Well, that is possible with the combination of LokiNet and SyncThing. Running SyncThing over LokiNet fixes a few problems. Number one, no need to punch holes in the firewall in the form of port forwarding. Number two, no need to create a VPN between the computers. Number three, no way for anyone to find out what your LokiNet address is unless you tell them. Number four, no way for anyone to find out which computers are talking to each other because LokiNet is onion routed. And number five, no need to use global discovery servers or relay servers that are problematic for privacy. Do you know another thing that's pretty cool? Your own custom LokiNet domain name. LokiNet addresses are really long and cryptic, like 52 random numbers and letters long and remembering one is pretty much impossible. But have no fear, you can register your own easy to remember LokiNet domain name at privacyproshop.com. It's very easy and it's also anonymous if you pay with cryptocurrencies. Credit cards are also accepted. You can register a .loki domain name for one year, two years, five years, or 10 years. So. Head on over to privacyproshop.com to claim your own domain on LokiNet. If you're not familiar with LokiNet or SyncThing, here is a quick explanation of what they are. LokiNet is an Onion router based on the low latency anonymous routing protocol. It works in a manner that resembles Tor, but doesn't require specialized applications. LokiNet operates over UDP rather than Tor's TCP, so it should be faster, especially for video and audio streaming. You can use any unmodified program for running over LokiNet, like SSH, browsers, audio and video streaming apps, email, and of course, file synchronization. You can also use it as a kind of a secure and private wide area network where you connect multiple computers or networks together with LokiNet. And that's what I'm going to show here. LokiNet is encrypted on the protocol level, so nobody can snoop even plain text communications over LokiNet. SyncThing is a continuous file synchronization app. It synchronizes files between two or more computers in real time. In other words, SyncThing is a peer-to-peer -peer file synchronization program that doesn't require any intermediaries. It's very powerful, versatile, and secure. While SyncThing is secure, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is completely private by default. By default, SyncThing has global discovery, local discovery, re and relaying enabled. Those three features make it so that SyncThing just works. On a local network, it just broadcasts for SyncThing servers on the same network. If the computers are remote, your SyncThing registers itself with global discovery servers, so your other SyncThing instances can find each other easily. Relaying is just what it sounds like. If there is no direct route between you and your peer, the relay servers are used to connect you together. If those ease of use features sound like privacy problems, they are. Of course, the actual data itself is encrypted by SyncThing, but metadata like IP addresses, timestamps, data sizes, and such are potentially exposed to unwanted parties. And it begs the question, if you are doing your own peer-to-peer -peer sync, do you really want anyone else to know that you are using SyncThing for it? I'll be installing SyncThing on Windows and Linux. The first thing to do is to install LokiNet on the Windows box. So let's go to lokinet.org and download it. Download it, click on the Windows download. 
Once it finishes, click on Open File. Run through the install. And here, make sure you check mark the box Persist Address. The rest of them can stay the same. Click Finish, and then right click on the Windows button, click on Computer Management, go to Services and Applications, and we want to enable the LokiNet service and start it. It's in alphabetical order, LokiNet for Windows, so we'll want to make it automatic and start it for now apply okay close this guy then verify that loki net works open up a command prompt you can do if ip config here there you can see that the loki net address is 172.16.01 let's ping an address let's ping our nemo.loki nemo is a Nemo Mail. It's our new anonymous email service over LokiNet. And there it is, it functions. Let's go on to the next one, which is to get SyncThing installed in this computer. So go to SyncThing.net, go to Downloads. Sync Tracer is what you want, the Windows tray utility. Works great. Scroll down, choose the Tracer Setup X64, that's almost everybody needs that one. And then run the installer. Just accept the defaults here. And we will click Finish to launch the program. And here we are. No, I don't want to allow anonymous reporting. I'm fine with the username and password situation. And I'm just going to delete the uh, default folder. And we'll edit the settings here. Go to connections and disable these, all of those. And then your Sync protocol listen address is tcp colon slash slash and then you get the address from here which is 172.16.0.1 colon 22,000 we'll click save Right now, the Windows one is uh, is done, except what we need the um, address from here for the Linux one. So let's do that. That's the LokiNet address. So go ahead and fire up LokiNet. So our LokiNet address is this one right here. We'll copy it to the clipboard. Actually, let's put it on a notepad file. Paste it in here. And then we want to get the uh, also this guy here copy this to the clipboard and paste it in the same text file and then we need to move it over to the to the Linux box so we can make these two connect together okay the first order of business is to get LokiNet installed in this Linux mint box so we'll go to deb.oxen.io make this a little bit bigger and we'll install first the repository signing key. That's done. Then we'll install the uh, repository itself for this particular distribution. 
So here is something that you need to change. You need to change the LSB. Since this is Linux Mint that uses different version names from Ubuntu, you need to change that to Jammy. This is based on Ubuntu 22.04. Then we'll do a sudo apt update. And finally install LockinET GUI. Next thing we need to do is to make sure that the LockinET address doesn't change every time the computer reboots or more accurately, every time LockingNet service is restarted. So we'll edit the file etc loki lokinet.ini. And under the network section, we'll add key file equals var lib lokinet. And then you can just give any name dot private to it. So low key IP dot private. Save the file, then restart looking it. Then we'll run looking at GUI. There it is. And if you just get a white page like this or the program just crashes, well, just we'll need to fix a thing here. So go ahead and close that. Go to, again, sudo. And we need to use an editor. I like Joe, but you use what you like. And here at the end of this line, change the percent %u to dash dash no sandbox. Save the file. Let's see if it works now. And it works. Let's make sure we can ping stuff on the Loki net. Nemo.loki is our Nemo.loki is our Nemo mail, which is anonymous email over looking it. Check it out at privacyproshop.com. So that works. The next order of business is to install sync thing in this computer. So we'll go to apt.syncthing.net. <clears throat> and again, we will add an other repository. So copy that, the key from there, again, paste it, there it goes, and you take the stable channel here, copy it, paste it, next is to update apt. And then we'll install sync thing. Next order of business is to make sync things start in the background. I mean, start as a service or a daemon, like they say in the Linux world. And sync thing runs as the user, so we'll run it as the demo user here. done. Next we will start it. Done. Then we need to get the IP address of LokiNet. So you do ifconfig. It tells you Loki tunnel IP address 172.17.0.1. So let's copy that. We're done with this. Open up Firefox. Go to localhost 8384. And there is 
sync thing waiting for us? No, we don't want to do anonymous reporting, but you do what you want to do. Click OK. Yes, that's fine. First is to go to settings and go to connections. Disable all of those. And then this one is TCP colon slash slash and then you paste the IP address we got there and port number is 22,000 is the default. So we just save that for right now. Perfect. Then I usually get rid of this default folder. So I'll click edit, remove, gone. Perfect. But then we need to get the Windows box address to share uh, the sync files with it. This one here, you add the Windows device device ID here. And then in the advanced, you put its locking it address here, which would be TCP colon slash slash. And again, ports 22,000. And we will click Save. Remote device has been added. Then let's add a local folder here, the Documents folder. And let's share it with our Windows box. Then from your Linux box, you need to copy the address here and get it to the Windows box. And you will also need the identification of sync thing from the Linux box. We'll add a remote device. This is from the Linux box. Then we go to advanced, type in TCP colon slash slash, and then the address colon 22,000. Let's just make sure that this address is. Save. And immediately it makes a connection to the Linux box overlooking it and sees that there is a documents folder that it wants to share. And yes, we do want to share, uh, accept it. Documents, yep, yep, everything looks good. We'll say yes. Documents have been shared. So now let's minimize this, open up our documents folder. And let's create a file here, like a new text document, call it new text document and say hello Linux nice to see you and as soon as we save this file it should be saved synchronized over to the Linux box so let's take a look at the Linux end of things here we are on the Linux box go to documents and look at that new text document showed up hello Linux nice to see you that's how you set up sync thing for Linux and Windows and have it synchronize over Lokinet. I hope that was useful. And if you're interested in session, Lokinet, and open source tech, as well as Oxen cryptocurrency, make sure to watch some of the other videos on this channel. Thanks for watching.